Hello my soccer universe. Well, for all the doubters of Serie A, we will most likely have an all Serie A semi-final, which meaning there will be an Italian team in the final. I'm not as ready as Fabio Capello to say Calcio is back. However, uh, it's a strong, strong showing from the Italians that might even continue now on today, Thursday in the Europa and Europa Conference League. But talking Champions League right now. Why I'm proclaiming this is because uh, these guys inter actually produced a tactical masterclass and I have to say that for, of all the uh, performances that to me was the most impressive one because given how Inter was bad in the league I did not expect them to deal with Benfica so easily. Yes there's still a second leg and Benfica is a really good team that was hampered by injuries but that was pretty, pretty exciting if you're an Inter fan, which clearly I am not. I actually wouldn't have minded <laughs> seeing Benfica go to the semifinals. However, if I think about it, to be fair, Inter had a really, really good Champions League campaign. I mean, they survived the group of death, uh, ousting Barcelona, the new Spanish champions, I think we can say so, having there a really good showing. And I want to even say that in the Champions League, Inter were more impressive than Milan, who kind of went through the group stage a little bit. And yeah, the showing against Spurs was okay, but I actually thought Inter overall in the Champions League were the better team. And with uh, Simone Inzaghi, they have a coach that really revels in knockout stages, not so much in the league though, and that might be their undoing. But yeah, uh, at this moment, of the three Italian teams, I'm afraid to say that it's Inter that I fear the most for going into the final. And I say fear as a Milan fan. Uh, it is finally poised on the in the other Italian game. And that's the only that, that that's the one thing in the Champions League I have to say. This year, uh, the knockout stage is not living up to the billing. It's kind of mad. We have already three out of four of the ties more or less decided uh, with the only finally poised on between Milan and Napoli and yeah that makes me a little bit more ner nervous and I would not be looking forward to uh, Derby della Madonina in the semi-final because I know that uh, Inter will have Milan's number there. I just have this gut feeling uh, although I Nah, I, I won't say. I mean, first team, I think, in me, me, me is better. Overall squad, Inter is the better one. So, uh, there you go. But, you know, Napoli still can turn it around. Uh, so, I've been talking a lot about this Italian part of the bracket. We have to talk also the upper part because, I mean, everyone expected Real Madrid to go uh, over Chelsea. And while Chelsea did have a good goal, good showing with a, a smarter decision, probably could have scored one. Real Madrid never got out of second gear to beat Chelsea 2-0. And the big final before the final between City and Bayern Munich uh, turned quickly, in, no, no, not quickly, but turned into a rout late on. A game that was rather tight. I still thought that Manchester City had the better uh, of most of the game, especially in the first half. But when Bayern were pressing for that equalizer, they got caught uh, better. They, they started making mistakes and they could have gotten really, really, really ugly. And it got really ugly afterwards as well with uh, Mane punching Sané uh, and those two are now on the same team and I will still confuse them because it's just two similar names. But yeah, let's talk a little bit about the games. I mean, I already said Benfica, Inter. Um, yes, Benfica were hampered in defense uh, with uh, playing two, uh, I think, teenagers in central defense which was definitely a factor for um in favor of inter uh but it was also a very tactically sound performance by inter i have to have to say by uh not letting benfica get into the high pressing style and this benfica team that just lost on the weekend to porto which i didn't pay much attention to in the sense because i really thought that um you know they were gearing up for the champ champions league but inter first of didn't allow benfica to get into the pressing game and then kept it tight and then when it was what was needed hit them on the counter and uh actually created more chances than benfica ever did and that was really really smart and for once they even scored 
the scores came in the second half. I thought that in the first half, uh, Befica, yeah, maybe got, I, I must say, were lucky, but got out of it. And then I thought that maybe uh, Roger Schmidt will make some adjustments, but no. Uh, Inter kept its mark, and then uh, Bastoni um, goal goes forward, makes a cross in where there are multiple Inter players unmarked in the middle, and Barella puts it into the net from a short distance. Uh, and then again, I there wasn't much coming from Benfica. The last chance was uh, just before the end when um, um, Pedro Gonzalez uh, could have scored probably, probably to make it a little a little, little bit interesting. No, it was then a penalty call after a few more chances from Inter. Uh, that yeah, um, stupid hands penalty. But if your hands are so much out, Joao Mario, I don't think you can can do much. And Lukaku is a uh, is gonna convert that one all day any day. And I just want to note, I mean, I saw it also on social media. He made the exact same celebratory gesture. And this time, did not get a yellow card. Nothing like, like that. Uh, actually, it was a peaceful celebration. And I also used it now in the thumbnail to say, you know, shh. Any case, um, although I was for Benfica, um, I have to say Inter impressed me and having seen every, everything else, I think Inter can make the final. Will they win it? That's a different story. Uh, because honestly, if Manchester City play like they played against Bayern, yes, it was a tight game. It was a tight tactical battle for most, more, more, most of the time. I actually thought that the Benfica Inter game was a little bit more and and entertaining, but the quality was higher uh, between Manchester City and Bayern. Uh, the first half, I mean, it went kind of back back and forth, but I always felt that City are a little bit more dangerous. The Bayern have sometimes a hard time getting out, and if they get out, yes, they create some chances. I think there was one, um, I want to say it was a, it was a Musiala shot that got blocked, uh, which was probably the biggest chance in, 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 in the game so far, unless you count the one time where Holland kind of uh, harried uh, somewhere on the line. But, you know... Um, I always felt that Bayern were a little bit more hang hang on that City. That City could find the next gear and Bayern were already playing full throttle uh, there. Uh, but it was an even relatively open game. That then took a turn towards City because uh, Rodri gets the ball, runs a little bit and takes a shot. Brilliant shot. However, when I look at the Bayern defenders, yes. There's the Holland fact factor that kind of stretches the Bayern D defense, but I the when the shot shot is taken, the way Kimmich turns away, I mean, uh, you see that he's taking a shot. Make yourself large. I mean, uh, I don't think this was a goalkeeping mistake because he sees it late and it's very well, 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 well placed, but I thought this was a very avoidable error. And this came right after that Musiala chance that I said, as I said before. And then City had a little bit the upper hand. However, in the second half, uh, Bayern came back and were pressing forward for the Eagles. There was a pretty good Lira Sané shot uh, that could have made, made it 1-1. Made it and just in that uh, period, City scores in the seventh, uh, 70th with Bernardo Silva make it 2-0. And it was all down to Upamecano, who already looked at Tini Bicheki completely lo lo losing. He's lo losing the ball. He wants to go in a dribble uh, against Grealish, which you never sure should do. I mean, uh, when, 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 when I look at this scene over and over, over, he has the ball. It's all safe. Either you play it back to, to the goalie or you try to go for the pass out or maybe pull it out. Don't go in the dribble because you're going to lose it. And at that moment on, I mean, he should have been taken off because he will, he, he, be, he became a real liability. And in, in the end, Bernardo Silva profits from, from that era. And then a little bit later, Erling Haaland makes it 3-0. And the tie is over. I don't see Bayern uh, scoring three without conceding one. I just don't. So, yeah. And then we had the bust up in the locker room that I said. Uh, afterwards it was kind of a little bit disappointing because from that moment from that game i expected way more and yeah i don't know what Tuchel saw that he fell in love with his team but you know whatever it is i think he wanted to keep spirits high but Bayern season is over and you really gotta ask ask yourself was it really worth sacking nagelsmann
because you're getting the same result now and I mean if you want to make a change you should have done it probably sooner just saying I think that the best game of the four was Milan against Nap Napoli it was I mean atmosphere the San Siro on the Champions League night for Milan, it is just something else. Especially when the whole stadium at the end of the Champions League uh, yells the champions. The uh, choreography with the seven stars, this is Milan, then the devil kind of scaring away the Napolitan actress and, and so on. It just fitted so perfectly. It's, it's something else. And yes... I know Milan need a new stadium because uh, you will not get the San Siro and uh, remodeling modeling is really, really difficult. However, I know and it's probably it's one of the things I'm ashamed of. I've never been at a game at the San Siro. This is something I really want to do, see a Milan game at the San, 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 San Siro. It is just something else. Uh, just the TV coverage, that alone. But the game even starts so well. And it was Napoli. Napoli that came a final, although Milan played the same lineup with which they beat Na Napoli 4-0 at the Maradona. Uh, Napoli came out firing and Quaratskelia from a really short distance in the first minute should have already made it 1-0, but uh, was very nicely blocked. And that was kind of the theme of the entire evening with um, Milan's defense holding tight and Napoli for the first 30 minutes for sure. Pressing Milan, uh, letting them not get out of their own half, really showing we are the best team in Italy. However, you lack Osimen up front and this experiment with Elmas in the center did not re really work. I mean, in the uh, lineups, everyone thought the Quaratskelia will play in the middle. No, he did not. It was Elmas. And uh, yeah, it was a nice idea, but I don't think that that worked. However, I think it's not only down to Osimen. Osman would have pull, uh, put out a bigger threat. However, the Milan defense were really, really, really sound and um, having Egg actually a little bit of a low block as, as well. And then trying to invite Na Napoli forward that you can hit them on the counter. Because if Milan has one thing, it is speed. And you saw it in the 28th minute when Rafa Leao uh, gets through the defense, slices like a hot knife through butter. Has a clear run on goal and should have pulled it on goal there. Uh, and that, that, that would have been already 1 0. At that moment, Napoli had already created chances. Mike Magnon uh, had a good save, I think, from Zielinski and, and so on. But honestly, now that Mike Magnon is playing, I'm feeling rather safe for Milan. Honestly. At least in big games. In, in little games, yeah. <laughs> so, 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 so beat. And then, um, I don't want to say, I mean, after 30, 30 minutes, Milan had the game settled. Napoli's energy was a little bit uh, uh, dissipating and especially the Leao chance then kind of alerted Napoli. You know, we cannot go all out. We cannot eat them alive because they're going to come back, back, back at us. And then it's again a counter. -egg. Now Napoli have, have, have them, um, uh, uh, being deep in their own half. The uh, ball comes to uh, Brahim Diaz who again with a quick spin move gets through two Napoli defense and suddenly it's a four on two counter attack. And Milan played perfectly. Brian Diaz plays it out to Leao, who takes a little, a little bit further. I thought he already thwarted it, but he plays it back to Brian Diaz, who kind of makes this weird spin move that makes a ball go forward to Benacer, who just uh, takes a hard shot. Meret may have been mispositioned, but it is 1-0 Milan. And then, actually, Milan could have scored again. There was a chance by Atonale, but especially the header after a corner from uh, Simon Kia. That uh, just crossbar under and it just jumped jumped out i mean a few centimeters lower and it's a goal uh which i would have liked a whole lot of course but you know it would have it would have been uh not very deserved lead second half i think napoli again tried to put milan a lot under pressure and milan had a little bit harder time creating chances these times around um they also brought on down uh raspatori for chucky lozano um in the end they created some early chances. Milan settled in the middle of the half and then came the two yellow cards for Anguissa, where especially the first one was probably not justified. And it also has, has, has said that the referee probably was the weakest link of the entire game. That yellow red was entirely avoidable. Uh, also, big note on Giovanni Di Lorenzo, who actually, he was the defender, but he created the most, uh, he had the most chances. And then even with a man... Um, more Milan didn't create all, all much. I mean, I knew when Rebic came came on. Yeah, okay, that's it with all the offensive uh, forays. 
I also found it curious that Pioli made only two changes, namely Salamakers for um, Benazer and Arevic for Brahim Diaz. Uh, Napoli had two big chances uh, before um, Oliveira had a header and I think a Di Lorenzo a shot. Both were saved, uh, one by Mike Menio onto the crossbar. Now that, 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 that was early an Elmer's header. So yeah. Milan hold out 1-0, it is an advantage, I can see. Milan at uh, Maradona has been very, very well. I think it's a finely poised tie. I would give slight advantage to Milan at this moment because of, and I said it when I draw, I think Napoli will not be happy to have Milan because they are an opponent that they match up not very well in that sense. And then we had Real Madrid against Chelsea. Uh, what can, can I say? <sighs> If uh, Joao Felix, when he gets the ball early in the first half, he runs straight. If uh, you have, I think he was running with Ed, Ed Militao. He's ahead of Ed Militao, who is catch, 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 catching up with him. If he makes the cut through, Ed Militao can only do one thing, can only follow him or let him go. And you have a much better chance. But he runs straight and then uh, he has the upper hand. And I think that was the game for Chelsea in in, 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 in in a way. Real Madrid didn't exert themselves too much. Vinicius Jr. Uh, nicely assists Benzema uh, to make it 1-0. They didn't create many chances. However, they were always the better team. They were all always in control and Chelsea just did not look right. And then uh, Ben Chilwell is sent off because the defense doesn't hold. Uh, and he's last man. I think he brings down Rodrigo. Uh, and Asensio makes it 2-0 in the 74th. Yes, Chelsea had chances. It was probably not a bad performance overall by Chelsea, but um, this Real Madrid team did, really didn't have to do much. The one thing, though, is my scene of the evening was when the ball came to Carlo Ancelotti and he in full suit and dress shoes. Juggles the ball and puts it back. It is just something, you know, uh, I love Carlo Ancelotti. Uh, makes it much more, uh, makes it much nicer to like this Real Madrid team. Honestly, because as, as long as Carlo is at the helm. So yeah, you also see on the same side we have the ties. I think the only one to look for is Napoli against Milan on next Tuesday. Uh, of course, I'm going to be... Uh, I would love for Milan to go on. But then I uh, look at the prospect of a Milan Derby in the semi-final. Which is something I really do not want to have, on, on, honestly. But hey, a Milan team could be back in the final of the Champions League. That is something that was unfathomable at the beginning of the season. And yes, luck of the draw, for sure. Uh, we also see that, you know, on Wednesday, Bayern will not do anything. Maybe Benfica can make it a little bit more interesting against Inter. I want to end it with the overall uh, chances, how they have changed. You see City are now overwhelming favorites. I mean, they're more or less already in the final, 98%, uh, semifinal, 98% for that. Whereas uh, Real Madrid, only 90%. So, you know, they are ghost uh, and City would, would, would be favorites as well. Uh, Inter are second at the moment because of the tight Milan-Napoli, which is 60-40 million, which I think sounds about right at this moment. We know that Osimen gonna come back to uh to play but uh they're missing um kim and they're missing anguissa which are two pillars in their uh setup so uh, it's gonna be curious but that's the only finally poised tie everything else is more or less decided i would say so that was it for me from the champ champions league please let me know what you thought thought about the, about the games who will be in the final at the moment I would say it will be City against Inter, but this will be one final that I will not be very excited. To be honest, uh, Dream Final Real Madrid against Milan. That would be fun. That would truly be fun. Any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so to get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!